Welcome to The Terrible Take, a mini podcast telling Steelers Nation what's on our mind. I'm Alex Kazura. Throughout their history, the Pittsburgh Steelers have been built by undrafted free agents. Names like Donnie Shell, Willie Parker, and James Harrison, all key components of the Steelers Super Bowls. That's made the last several years awfully disappointing. So many underwhelming UDFA classes post-draft. Some guys wouldn't make it out of rookie minicamp, few impressed in training camp, and it was rare to find a gem. At best, they picked up someone like Ola Adaini. Why have the Steelers struggled to unearth that diamond in the rough? Two reasons. An unwillingness to spend their allotted signing bonus pool. Last year was around 120000 In 2020, they spent about half of that. Two, and more importantly, their apparent philosophy of not guaranteeing partial base salaries. That's the workaround teams use for their signing bonus limit. Offer a bonus and a guarantee, say $100,000 of the player's base salary. A bonus that's technically not a bonus. And that attracts the marquee undrafted for agents. Push comes to shove. Someone who just went undrafted is looking at opportunity and depth chart, sure, but they also want to get paid. Makes up for that feeling of not being drafted a little bit easier to swallow. It felt like this year was going to be the same. The Pittsburgh's undrafted class would be meh. But looking at the eight guys they signed, it's actually pretty good. It was a clear focus for what Pittsburgh was looking to add. Four of their eight undrafted guys were defensive backs, corners, or safeties. And there's talent among that group. Michigan State slot corner Shakur Brown could have been drafted on day three. Duke's Mark Gilbert almost certainly would have been picked had it not been for injury suffered the past two years. Florida's Donovan Steiner was productive with the Gators, while Lamont Wade had a nice career with Penn State. Even wide receiver Rico Bussey Jr. is an intriguing player to watch. Who knows how good this group will really be, but on paper, it's much better than their recent classes have looked. So what changed? Right now, it's hard to say. Maybe the team spent more of its signing bonus pool. We know Brown received a $25,000 bonus to come to Pittsburgh. That's more than they spent on any undrafted player in recent seasons, though it's worth pointing out the league's allowance has increased year by year. Maybe free agents saw more of a need and opportunity in the secondary, with the team doing little to address that in the draft, spending only a 7th round pick on Oklahoma's Trey Norwood. Maybe the Steelers scout studied Glenn Gary Glenn Ross and went to work on their ABCs, always be closing. No matter the reason, I'm glad to see some life from these undrafted guys. I'm not proclaiming the next Donnie Shell is in this bunch, but I think one of these guys will make an impact. Be sure to follow us at SteelersDepot.com and check out episodes of The Terrible Take every weekday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And check out The Terrible Podcast with myself and Dave Bryan every Tuesday and Friday.